Ladies and gentlemen, let's show Gamers Today.com video. We're going to be talking about rumors concerning AMD's Vega lineup of graphics cards, also known as Greenland. So during AMD's Capsaicin event, which was held in uh, GDC 2016, the company did reveal a roadmap which would show that Polaris would debut this year, and then next year we would see the first HPM2 GPU codenamed Vega. But a LinkedIn profile from a fellow by the name of Yu uh, Zend, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, who is the manager of research and development over at AMD, states one of his accomplishments as, and I quote, leading chip of the first IPv9 generation. It has full capacity of 4096 shader processors, along with whole new SOC V15 architecture, with end quote. Now, it doesn't take a genius to at least pluck a few details from that sentence. The first is leading chip equals flagship, of course, which means it's going to be the flagship of the Vega lineup or Greenland. We're not exactly sure if there's going to be multiple iterations of Greenland, but it looks like, yes, there will be. Now, from previous slides from AMD, as I said earlier, we know that uh, Vega is going to debut high bandwidth memory 2 and Polaris is not going to have HPM2. It's either going to have GDDR5X, GDDR5 or HBM1. We're unsure which combinations of those um, are going to relate to different GPUs in the lineup, but we know that HBM2 is not going to debut this year. But what's rather interesting, and you may take some issue with this, is that Vega has the same number of shaders as what AMD's Fiji lineup does, that would be the Fury X. <clears throat> Both cards have 4096 shaders. So you might say to yourself, well, what the hell is going on? Is it just gonna be a more efficient um, Fiji? Is it just gonna be a little faster? Is it just gonna require less energy? What's going on there? Well, there are some key features which were highlighted of the fourth generation of GCN uh, back in uh, the Radeon Technology Conference earlier this year. Now, I'll read out some of the benefits. They are primitive discard accelerator, hardware scheduler, instruction prefetch, improved shader efficiency, and finally memory compression. All we need to know about all of that is that the hardware is not only going to be more efficient when it comes to moving data around the GPU itself, for example, thanks to memory compression, but with things such as improved prefetch, improved shader efficiency, and hardware scheduler, we should theoretically start seeing the, I guess you could say, more efficient and more um, effective way of actually utilizing the shaders of the processor, which theoretically means that the same amount of uh, hardware, or same number of shaders, should be able to accomplish more. We should see less GPU bubbles, which means essentially little slices of time where one of the shaders or multiple shaders are just doing nothing, they're sitting idle, which doesn't obviously help towards uh, rendering graphics, it's literally just sitting there. And we also should see things such as primitive discard accelerator, which should also improve the efficiency of rendering a scene before uh, it gets too far along in the pipeline, which is obviously a really good thing. Now, this does coincide to another leak which happened just a few days ago, which we've also discussed. Uh, by the way, this is also an article, so if you want links to all of the stuff that I'm talking about, you can just look in the article rather than having, you know, it's just easier. But um, in regards to the previous leak, with Polaris, uh, Polaris 10 specifically, supposedly one of the models has 2304 shaders inside. Now, we know from a fact that that was running the Hitman demo, um, as we saw, at 1440p at 60fps. Unfortunately, we don't know all of the details concerning the model that was shown at Capsaicin. All we can assume, to a degree, is that it had, um, I, I guess you could say, one of the further along production models. So we don't know, for example, what the clock speeds were. Supposedly, the clock speed of the leak was only at 800 megahertz, which is obviously pretty damn conservative, and most likely is an engineering sample. Now, finally, I'd like to bring us to the, the point of the IPv9. So, if you need some evidences of this, you can actually check out AMD's own website, and it actually mentions fixes for IPv7 and IPv8. So, immediately that tells you, well, those are already available, right? Because the dates for those were a couple of years ago. I believe it's 2014. 
Now a user at PC Tuning Forums, his name is Yuri.cs, actually put together a handy dandy shiny table for reference. It does not include Vega, but what it does show is that Polaris is supposedly going to be 8.1 and basically that means we're already up to 8. So theoretically speaking, Vega slash Greenland should be a pretty big jump in, once again, the architecture. So basically it looks like AMD's roadmap is going to be thusly. We've got 28NM now, which is obviously anything you can buy. That would be, for example, the, if you were to mosey on out and buy an R9 390, that would be 28NM. Polaris is coming, which is going to be 14NM, which is going to offer 25 times performance per watt. It's also going to have a slew of other efficiency um, adjustments, as we've just discussed earlier. For example, the primitive discard accelerator. And then finally, we're going to see Vega in uh, next year, which should offer HBM2 and obviously some refinements onto the GCN architecture. And then a year or two after that, we'll see Navi. Unfortunately, we don't know so much about Navi. All we know is it's going to have, and I quote, next-gen memory. Your guess is as good as mine on that one. And it's also going to have what is known as scalable architecture. Your guess is also as good as mine on that one as well. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'm going to get going. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.